<laughs> What's it do to be on a team? Come on. What's it do? It keep me out of out of the streets. I be at practice a lot, and it's like you ain't got nothing else to do, so. Basketball is helping me, like. It's about, like, communicating and having fun and meeting other people. And what did it do for you when you got included into the team and the, and the element of the team and, and, the, and the program? My grades, my, like, my grades came up, and I started wanting, like, to do better in school. Back when we were teenagers, we were called kids. Now we're calling them young adults. And I didn't have the pressures that they, I mean, we worried about going to school, playing some ball, and hanging out. Now these kids are worried about going to school, not getting in a fight, hopefully not getting shot on the way home, maybe playing some ball, and surviving. It's a tight game. The teams are evenly matched and they're both playing well. A season's worth of teamwork is on display. Your team, relies on you to show up for practice, to do your best at practice. You're, you're counted upon to make sure that you give individual effort for the whole. Because it's just like life, you know, yeah, one person by himself can't do anything. But when you get everybody on the same page and working towards this common goal, you can do anything. The team concept, I mean, is, is very big. It's very big in everyone's life. They make sure to go man to man. If they go man to man, we go one guard, wing option to Nate. If they go man to man, we go wing option to Nate. You're at the high post at a good screen for Nate. You got that? Seven seconds left. All tied up. Time for one shot. Richmond may not get along with the kids from Vallejo. Vallejo may not get along with the kids from Oakland. However, because you're playing basketball, you know, now we're competing. We're not fighting it out. We're not shooting it out. We're competing against one another. And you can be on the same team, and you can be from different blocks, and from different blocks, not get along with each other. But because I'm on your team, but when we're playing ball, we're working together. If you can get rid of your differences on the basketball court, you surely can get rid of your differences on the street. So one morning, this bunch of clowns heads for the airport. That might sound like the beginning of a bad joke, but it's really the start of a journey of discovery about the healing power of play. Meet Patch Adams, clown, medical doctor, revolutionary, provocateur. Patch Adams is something of a celebrity these days, thanks to the hit movie made about his life and his quest to keep people healthier through play. Love has been on the pedestal as the greatest thing in life. And I'm not trying to boot love off, but I am trying to show that in the way we act and behave and speak, that fun, play in action, is as important as love in our life. They're the two cornerstones of life. This intrepid band of clowns travels the world from the Kremlin to Kosovo to spread their message. Their ranks include Beach Clown, Patch's trusty assistant, and a number of medical doctors who prescribe play as a remedy for life's ills. Bowen White is from Kansas City, Missouri. He trained as a family practitioner and first began clowning with Patch Adams in 1991. As a clown, I have license for lunacy that I don't have in my ordinary civilian garb and civilian roles, but I'm still playful. In fact, I'm more playful now than I was before I started clowning because there's a residual effect that stays in the psyche where you see options and opportunities for goofiness. When Patch and his band get into character, that's the way they stay. Clowning isn't just performance. It's a way of relating to everyone they meet. Patch and his samurai of play are headed to El Salvador, where they will spend a week visiting hospitals and orphanages. It seems that word of their arrival has preceded them. 
Bowen White wasted no time before unleashing his clown persona, Dr. Yurko, on the unsuspecting people of El Salvador. That's Dr. J-E-R-K-O. My first exposure to a group of people, I'll use the clown because he creates an environment for, that's safe for people to laugh and have fun, and then they drop their defenses. When Patch and the gang descend on a new destination, no one is safe, not even the security police assigned to protect them. Maybe it is in the times when people feel it most inappropriate is when I want to play the most. No, I see no inappropriate times for play or for love. The group is heading for a place where play and love are often in short supply. They are en route to a shelter for abandoned children. Designed for 125, Today, this shelter has more than 185 abandoned kids. When they arrived, some of them were too young to tell the staff their names. So they've been renamed for the policeman who rescued them, or the streets where they were found. It's horrible to be in an orphanage. There's not a good orphanage. Because there shouldn't be any, it's like there's not a good nursing home. There shouldn't be any orphanages or any nursing homes. And there are, so what can we do about it? What they do is look for ways to connect with the kids they meet, using the international language of play. There's a face, there's a play face. In animals, there's a play face. In children, there's a play face. In adults, there's a play face. And I put on my play face, and I'm with children, yeah. and we make a connection. In that moment, I am fully alive. Play's important. We know it's important. We know that kids, when they're playing, are learning things. Problem is, we don't educate kids in ways that are playful. And we tend to not honor play as a value as adults. So over time, what happens is children quit playing, quit doing original play, and then they start doing competitive play and turn play into work and do what we did. When I think about why people are unhappy, why people don't play, I think basically children imitate grown-ups. You want so much to be an adult, to be grown up, and so you imitate that behavior. You imitate the suspiciousness of adulthood, the competitiveness of adulthood, all of which kill play. Brian Alberto is three years old. He was abused and then abandoned on the streets. He had arrived at the orphanage just 10 days earlier. I could instantly see that he was left out in his own mind, not necessarily in anyone else's mind, but he was feeling alone and I wanted to hold him because when I feel like, I'm not even sure I've ever felt as alone as I thought he projected. But if I were, I, I'm going to go straight to a, the nearest lap and be cuddled. It's clear that everyone benefits from this kind of contact. I don't want to pretend to think that there's something I'm measuring for long-term effects. I'm more, in a way, more interested in the effects of the givers that, that come in. And how can we make it an event that they want to do it again, but five times a year instead of one? For Bowen White, the most profound moments of the trip came from a visit to an orphanage nursery. Here, 40 infants were lying two to a bed, including six-month-old Kara. It's a gift to me. It's a gift to myself to be here with Kara. I mean, I'm selfish. Selfish enough to own what I need. And I need this kind of connection.
And you don't have to come to San Salvador to do this. Patch Adams has come to realize that, at the heart of the matter, there is play and love. They both connect us at the deepest level. We are taking play in our clowning in a, in a much more traditional sense of play. Loud noise, uh, gay abandon, laughing frivolity. But it's, it's incorrect to think that play doesn't have a, a silent component. Take the child that was in the hospital today. I, I didn't ask what her problem was, but play made it possible for me to go up and be with her. And there was her father and her. For me, that's play. I am using play to go to the worst possible moment. Play is a connector. Play and love address alienation like a frontal attack. I don't have to come here to be fully alive. But when you're around people that are suffering, one of the things suffering does, it evokes something in you. You get your heart broken open, and then you see what's inside. I think if we started valuing play more, then what we would probably do would be, we'd be paying attention in new ways with beginner's mind, with the eyes of the child and see options and possibilities uh, to solve some of the enormous problems that we have. I don't think play is done to the exclusion of ignoring the pain and suffering and unfairness of the world. I think play may help us better deal with it actually. of Play Series is made possible by a grant from the American Toy Institute. The fun, creativity, and fascination of play are essential to a child's healthy development and well-being. Don't underestimate the power of play.